It was almost a monumental moment to just be like, this is women's football. Something have turned it around. They're not ready to leave this title race yet. But it really is the, the addiction, the obsession with the game, with the club that keeps you going. Today is Spain back day. They did change the Scottish women game forever. They did that. She's going to score! I think the split brought a lot of excitement to the league. Uh, you know, potentially everybody on the outside had given City the title and counted both us and Rangers out. And I remember we uh, we have a team meeting, and I ask one by one, I ask Lisa, do you think we can win the league? And she says yes, we can. And like that, exactly to every single player, I ask them, do you think we can win the league? The answer of every single player was yes, we can. So guys, obviously we got massive, massive games, so very, very important the focus on today, but it's also important because I know you might want to talk to your family, to your loved ones or your friends, etc. So obviously the club has been pushing and we managed to get the game on the Thursday on the 11th against Glasgow City, it's going to be a Celtic Park. I think it's important for every Celtic player to experience playing at Celtic Park. Uh, we're in here every day, it's our place of work. We come in for breakfast, we're around, we now know all the faces that are in here and they know us. But to get the opportunity to actually play on that grass in this historic stadium, we feel like it's what we deserve as players who have put everything into the club for the past few years. And we were just so appreciative that we were getting that opportunity to showcase to, to a lot of the fans what we could do. I did feel the pressure, I was nervous leading up to it, um, especially with the crowds that we've been having recently. When you start to hear that there's thousands of fans coming to watch, the potential for a record-breaking crowd, it's such a weird mix of emotions because I go and watch every home game that the men play in. And I always say that I would love to experience it. But when that became almost a reality, I started to realise that the fear of it not going well was quite terrifying. Okay, so guys, we are not asking you anything that we haven't done before. Focus! Passion and belief, that's what we say last time. And we absolutely destroyed them. And that's what is gonna to happen today. If something don't go right in the game, you know what? There are 9,000 people, 9,000 people that came here to see you. I got goosebumps telling you that, guys. So go out there and leave everything, everything you got, everything. Do not leave anything in the tank. It is indeed a huge game, this, with the SWPL title waiting to be won. If Celtic lose, they're out of the race. Toby Craig's mistake has let Lauren Davidson in and this could be ominous for Celtic. We found ourselves 1-0 down. I took the opportunity to, to pull the girls in and to just look at each one of them and just say we're okay. We just need to calm down and, and to almost enjoy the moment. At half time, Fran told us really honestly what he thought. Shocking, guys. Shocking. I see a sharing of 9,000 people here today. Overheat passes, lack of concentration. The only positive thing, the only positive thing is if we manage, if we manage to play with heart, if we manage to play with quality that you go and with belief, if we manage to do that in 45 minutes, that's going to be epic. And that occurred.
Fuller made room for the cross. It's Amy Gallagher. Flint. What a strike that is! But ready to make a move in as it comes in. We've seen how quick she can be, and she's onto this. The Fesky could make sure of it here, and she does. That should do it for Celtic. That should put the world truly back in the title race. I think what what people not necessarily forget, but what, what they miss is it. It's not just nine and a half thousand. It's not just fifteen and a half thousand. It's the atmosphere that's created. It's just it's incredible. I think before the last game, all of the emotions that we'd felt before the Glasgow City game were even more heightened. Let's talk more about this big final day for the SWPL. Glasgow City, defending champions Rangers and Celtic all with a chance to win it. So through the course of the afternoon, we'll be watching the games unfold and midway through the matches, we will depart towards the match that has the team at that stage is leading the table. And speaking to officials from Celtic this morning, they could be expecting anything around 15,000 inside Celtic Park. It's going to be an incredible afternoon. Will that trophy have green and white ribbons on it come the end of the afternoon? We'll find out in the not too distant future. I was actually at my turnstile at the men's game against St Mirren the day before and the couple behind me spoke about whether they were going to the women's game the next day. It was genuinely crazy. Right. The moment that, that caught me was in the changing room when Kelly Clark and Natalie Ross gave us a massive speech. Hey girls, I get women's football, I get professional football, and I know that for some of you Celtic is just start of a journey. For some of you it's part of a special journey. For some of us, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't just anything. It was something that we've done over the past couple of seasons, once a year, and on an occasion where Fran has deemed it necessary and he deemed it necessary on that day. But girls, I thank you because on Thursday night, no matter who I looked at, Celtic was everything. It was everything. And before we even go out on the pitch today, we have won something this season that I never expected us to win. Girls, on Thursday night, we won the hearts. We captured the imagination of thousands, tens of thousands of Celtic fans. And for that, I thank you. Because that is a victory that I never believed we would win in Scotland, just never. Before we even pick a ball today, I asked that all we do is show that same level of passion, because that's the minimum that those fans ask. And I'm telling you that as long as we show that minimum level of passion, that those tens of thousands of fans will show up again next year. Their speeches were the things that, that, that made that game that little bit more special. It gave us that fire, it gave us that belief. We've got players here, it's a dream to play for this club. They support Celtic the whole life, Craig, it's a dream for you. We've got players that travel the other side of the world to play for this club. We've got players from America, China, New Zealand, Australia, England, Ireland. We've got a player from Dundee. Every single one of us is with us. Forget about the league, we can't affect that game that's happening over there, the other one in Glasgow, we can't affect it. All we can do is concentrate on today. And it's going to take every single one of us. Every single one of us has contributed to this season. And that's what's going to happen today. If you're starting, if you're on the bench, you get injured in the sands, every single one of us is fighters. And that's what makes us different to any other team in the league. We've all been on our own footballing journeys and it's brought us to this point right here today. Something special could happen, but if we don't deal with this game today, nothing will happen. So we have to go out there and show them what this means to us, what this club means to all of us. But we knew we have to win our game. We knew we have to try to score as many goals as possible. Another fantastic atmosphere here inside Celtic Park. Gallagher is there. And it's just wide. Celtic so close to the perfect start on D-Day. And 
And it is again. And a real chance at the near post, Chloe Craig. Shen. Oh, what a chance. What a chance for Caitlin Hayes! It's the opening goal for Celtic. What an incredibly important goal that could be. Decent cross in, it must be a goal, and it is! And it's Natasha Flint, gets her head on the Chloe Craig cross. That is the second goal for Celtic. They're into four minutes of added time at Ibrox, four more minutes of pain. But if that one ends 0-0, Celtic will be champions. On the stands, we got Ale uh, with the mobile phone, just checking the score. Uh, so the, the instructions were, uh, you know, only he will have the phone. Uh, if there is a goal in the other game, he will communicate. It was the 90th minute. And I remember turning and, and did uh, this to, to, to Ale. And, and he did like that. And I thought, wow, you know, I start to get emotional uh, because I start to remember, uh, you know, how hard we worked this season. Then a couple of minutes later, uh, you know, Michael Michael came and he said, uh, you know, the, the hardest word I hear all season. There's been a goal at Ibrox, and would you believe Glasgow City have scored in the second minute of injury time? That is a goal that could hand Glasgow City the title. It was extremely hard. But at least I could still feel pride for the players, for the performance. I still could see the, the, our fans singing, but yes, we, we just missed that. And then something bizarre happened. We're winning 2-0 at this point and we're coming to the latter stages of the game. And I remember hearing a noise that I've never heard before. A cheer goes up around Celtic Park. It was a roar, um, and no one with the ball particularly did anything that good. So I was almost like confused as to as to what's happened, and and I remember Craigie looking over to me because she was on my right, um, and she was like, "We've done it. We must have done it." There's a goal for Rangers, and that equaliser means the title is coming back to Celtic again. I mean, you literally could not write this. So from extreme sadness, I went to extreme happiness. And two goals in stoppage time at Ibrox are dictating whether or not Celtic win their first league title. We'll wait for confirmation to come through. I don't know, it's gone all quiet again. <laughs> What's going on? I turned to Dan, who was uh, keeping an eye on, on things, and you know, I just said, have they equalised? Mm. Yeah, then he, he just turned and says, it's, it's not counted. It appears that Rangers' goal has been disallowed. I'm, I'm, I'm slightly lost for words. So Kelly running up on the pitch, and uh, she, as she was running forward, she turned around and she says, is it finished? And she said, have we won? And I turned around and I said, no. That was a particularly, probably then it, it kind of hit me a wee bit. Having to, you know, tell her and look her in the eye was, it wasn't an easy moment. But it's not to be for Celtic and Fran Alonso, who until around five minutes ago, were going to become the title winners. And when that full-time whistle went and there was just silence, there was no cheering, there was no communication on what was going on or what, had, what was happening or if we'd won it, have we not won it. Throughout my whole career at Celtic, the most belief that I had that we were winning this league was then. And for that to be taken away with a minute left of the game was it was, it's just something that's indescribable. 
They haven't won it. They thought Rangers had equalised. They were playing off the crowd. And it's absolutely devastating for Celtic, but they can hold their head up high. They've contributed to what has been the tightest of tightest title races that this league has ever seen and may ever see. I remember taking myself off for a moment and, and just to where someone wasn't, uh, where nobody was, which was the middle of the park. And I just, I crouched down for a little because I, I was overwhelmed at the moment and all these emotions that were going from not doing it to doing it to hearing the roar like I'd never heard before. And, and it was almost like a moment of, we've all got each other, um, we're proud. And obviously there was an element of negative emotion, but you can't, you can't feel sad when, you, when your fans are screaming and shouting your name or screaming and shouting your team to, because they're proud. And you can't feel sad when, when you've just played in front of 16,000 people and, and broken a record in Scotland for a women's game. A massive victory for us is that we seem to have won a group of fans' hearts. And the Kelly from 10 years ago would have told you that it would take 30 years and I would certainly be retired before 16,000 people have walked through the gates to see Celtic FC women. I spend the, the evening calling, calling most of the players uh, to check on them to see, to see that if they are right. And most, most of them, they could see the bigger picture. They could see what, what, what we have together achieved. The fact is they, they did change the Scottish women game forever. They did that. We packed ourselves up and we went going the next week. We were, got the opportunity to play at Hamden uh, for a second time and it was another stage that women's football deserved to be on this season. So guys, I never experienced anything like the last two games at Celtic Park. Never! You can have bigger crowds, but no more passionate crowds, guys. And today, we are going to give them what they deserve. Today is payback day! Another one away from the goalkeeper. What a chance for the opening goal for Celtic! And it's Tash Flint in the 65th minute! The, the mental strength of, of those players, for them to have that level of disappointment to then go on the next week after and just raise themselves. The goalkeeper comes out the header. Is it going to loop in? It does loop in! Celtic have a second goal and it's O'Riordan! Being able to look up at the fans and seeing them chant and do the huddle was a moment that I'll never forget. But what do you expect for a fan like Celtic with the best in the world? So. Final whistle goes, Fran Alonso's fists are in the air. I think the cup was even more so important this year because as daft as it sounds, I think you celebrate and enjoy certain moments when there's a tangible thing to be held and, and that cup definitely stood for something that we, we weren't empty-handed. Yesterday has been made the first Women's Scottish Cup final at Hampden Park. has been won by Celtic. We want to bring as much success to this club as possible and you know, we've proven time and time again that playing in front of fans is, is when we play our best. I feel like I'm part of the furniture, I've been here for 10 years, but it's never felt the way that it felt now. We've genuinely done something so special this year, and we need to keep building on that momentum. Looking ahead to next season, we've obviously got Champions League to look forward to, and, and to have the, the backing of, of the Celtic support, I think is something that's really important. I think it's, it's never failed us this, this season, and I think it's been there when we most needed it. I don't think there's a better starting place um, than this season. Obviously, testament to the girls that have wore this shirt before me and, and before us, and they've helped us get to this moment. Fans to the team, team to the fans. We feel so proud of each other, and we fight for each other. Uh, and I, I know this is the beginning of something very, very special. I know things are going to be different this season coming, um, but the, the new challenges that we have, the new goals that we've set out for ourselves, it's, 
it's going to be exciting where the game has to go, particularly in the green and white, is something that's going to be a special journey and I think, I think you'd be silly not to join in. And next year we want it to be even bigger and even better because we're not going anywhere but up.